Hey, Shalom, this is your brother Yuanathan, first and foremost. I want to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Bahashim, Rakak I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And I want to say Shalom to all the brothers and, of course, the few sisters who are pursuing this truth in sincerity. All right, may the blessing of election be upon your house. So today I have a clip for you guys. And within the clip, it's going to illustrate to you the times, the conditions that are getting ready to come upon the earth. The prophets, man, we're going to continue to warn you and to fear monger, all right, by the terror of the Lord, we persuade men so that you could repent. Now, we know only the elect of the nation of Israel are actually going to repent, but this is our job. So we watch for signs of the times. When we find information that backs up what the scriptures say, we bring it out to you and link it up and show it to you. See, look, is this not what the scripture says? So that's what we're about to do. I'm about to play this clip for you guys, and we'll pause it as need be and bring our points through the spirit. So, you know, I brought his eye, it's edifying. Let's get it. Well, viewers of the show understand that I adhere to a few basic policies, one of which is whatever Canada is doing legislatively, do the opposite. But I may have to expand that policy to include France. And here's the latest reason why. The country has banned short haul flights in the name of reducing carbon emissions. This applies to any destinations within France that can be reached in under two and a half hours of a driving time. How long before this craziness gets to America? Not long at all. I mean, what we see happens in Europe comes to the United States shortly. This has been part of a long planned effort to fulfill the World Economic Forum's vision of, you know, you'll own nothing, be happy. Well, this is, you will go nowhere and be happy. And we're already seeing Bloomberg News is reporting that the idea of... You will go nowhere and be happy. Uh, the scriptures talk about in um, Second Ezra. Let me see here. Let's see if I can make this a little bit smaller. Put it off to the side. The scriptures talk about in Second Ezra um, a man desiring to go into a city and shall not be able, okay? It's going to be, you know, chaos coming in from all sides. It's going to be war. It's going to be pestilence. It's going to be famine. All right? And there's going to be restriction of movement. And that's what this devil wants so that he can have control, so that people have to come for him, come to him for want and need of all things. Now, we do that already, but he wants to up it to an entirely new level. In order for you to have any kind of, you know, normalcy, sense of normalcy, right? He's going to make things so harsh, so draconian, that people are going to be willing to bend the knee and to receive his mark, all right? Because they've all, people are already taking on the image. They're already taking on the philosophy, his way of thinking. But he wants to go further. He wants to have dominion over the souls of men, all right? And the way for him to do that is for people to receive that digital all, that stamp of ownership, Okay, so let's get this precept in uh, Second Ezra, and uh, we'll, we'll get back to the clip. So this is Second Ezra, the 15th chapter, and we'll start here at the top at the 14th verse. All right, it reads, "Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh." All right, we see World War Three. I'm a God. Why I'm being sent up? We see the nations, you know, bigger nations being drawn into the chaos. All over the world, France, uh, African countries, Russia's already in the thick of it, all right? And many nations are aligned with Russia in the East already. The West is being dragged into it. They, they, they're, they're involved. America's involved. They send troops over to the Ukraine and all these weapons and things like that. And, and they try to do it underhandedly like they're not involved. But eventually, it's going to be full-blown pandemonium and war between these nations, between the East and the West. Along with that, famine is already being orchestrated in Europe. It's coming here to America. Restriction of movement. The, the groundwork for it is being laid. Okay? They already had the trial run for it here in Babylon, right? With the pandemic. And they didn't even have to have a vote. And he's going to say that in the, uh, in the, in the news clip. Because they use fear. They use these propaganda tactics to get people to bend to their will. All right? Because they don't understand the scripture. They don't understand right from wrong. They don't understand how a righteous kingdom is supposed to, you know, what it's supposed to look like. 
the ordinances is supposed to go by. They just do what they told, as long as they got a tablet in front of their face, a little entertainment, a little BS celebrity news, a little distraction, a little drama in their life, they're fine. They don't question. All right, verse 15, for the sword and their destructions are of nine, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hand, it's going to be complete chaos, and again, this devil, he brings order through chaos, order ab chaos. He brings order out of chaos. All right. So he wants things to get to a point to where people are just like, somebody needs to fix this. But the thing is, this devil won't be able to fix it. It's going to get to a point where it completely spins out of control. And the real order out of the chaos is going to come from Yahweh by Shemuel Shah. When he cracks the skies open and destroys the nations. All right. Verse 16. For there shall be sedition among men. All right, let's look up that word sedition here. All right, sedition from the Adam online. And it says what? Uh, rebellion, uprising, revolt. All right, commotion in the state. So, you know, people are going to be rising up against the powers that be because they're going to finally realize that, the you know, your senators, your presidents, your administrators, your handlers, pretty much, don't give a shit about you. All right, and the people above them actually don't even really give a shit about them. So that's why the love of many is gonna wax cold, man. The people are gonna do whatever they need to do to survive. They're gonna go into survival mode. And in the midst of, you know, everybody being in survival mode, all right, in the midst of that adversity, the men of the Lord are gonna shine forth as gold. That's when we become the high value man of the earth when it's finally seen. Right now it's not, right? But in the midst of all of that, there are gonna be people that are like, oh snap there must be some divine protection over these men for them to be able to navigate the way that they're navigating for them to have the mindset that they have these men are completely different these men are set apart from the rest all right and we're building up our faith so that the lord can you know put that uh, even more potent spirit of boldness on us you know faith is going to be the access to having you know, uh, this the spiritual mindset that we're supposed to have, the access to spiritual power, okay? Faith is the key, so that, that's what you need to be focused on, building action, reading these words and applying it to your life, envisioning it, you know, and praying to the Lord for more understanding and the bigger portions of faith, all right? We get little opportunities with, you know, things that arise up in our day-to-day -day lives that may stress us out, those are little opportunities to walk up rightly and exercise our faith that the Lord is with us. You see? All right, so let's get back to 2nd Ezra, the 15th chapter, uh, 16th verse again. It says, For there should be sedition, all right, now we know what that word means, among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Okay? People are not going to be worried about putting on that facade that they put on like they give a shit about the man next to them these people are going to be out every man for himself to survive crime rate is going to shoot through the roof it's going to be time it's going to be a time like never was before seen and the scriptures tell you that in Matthew 24 and uh, 21 Daniel 12 and 1 you know so how are you preparing for that time are you spiritually prepared because you're not going to go out guns a blazing and navigate that time no that's not how it's going to work so the question is man okay well if, if there is a way if there is a way to navigate this how is it going to be navigated and that's what the men of the lord here are here to uh tell you to tell you how to navigate it and that's stated in what uh zephaniah 2 and 3 seek righteousness seek meekness so that you may be hid in the day of the lord's anger all right, we seek to be hid in the day of the Lord's anger, which is fastly approaching. All right, this is verse 17. And a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. And that was the scripture that we wanted to back up what the man was saying in the video. All right, there's going to be a big restriction of movement. Okay. All right, so let's start it back up.
Are you seeing Bloomberg News is reporting that the idea of cheap airline travel in Europe is a thing of the past as, quote, climate compliance rules, unquote, get more and more strict. What they're doing is their, their government is banning these short air flights, forcing people into cars with a much higher death rate, by the way. You're much high, more likely to get in a car crash and die than a plane crash, number one. But this is the idea of we're doing this to save the planet. Now, the French government admitted that this isn't even going to impact CO2 emissions. So it's actually completely symbolic in terms of the planet or the environment but it's actually a major uh, imposition on the French citizens. And it's spreading to Germany, Austria, other countries in Europe, and you can bet Canada's going to jump on this bandwagon. It's a net zero commitment. The BBC has already said, what would a flying free world look like? The fix is in, and it is coming to the United States. Their goal is to... They made the statement, uh, you will own nothing and be happy, and that's what, you know, Carl Schwab, that's the vibration that they want to push. They want to make a complete surf class. Them and, you know, the vessels that they can use and manipulate. They, they, they don't want a middle class. They don't want people that can kind of have a little freedom or, you know, be in a position of, man, fuck you guys. I'm going to do my own thing. They want everybody to completely depend on them. Right? That's what they desire. That's what they need for them to fulfill their plans of being, you know, uh, in the seat of the most high. Because that's what they desire, right? this global and put restrictions we already see the city of oxford putting in 15 minute cities hearkening back to the days of east germany with travel restrictions uh, let me see your papers you cannot leave your sector that's what we're dealing with here this is spreading and it, and it started in europe by the way going after the food supply going after high yield agriculture and animal agriculture and guess what john Kerry announced last week that agriculture is now in the climate targets in the united states so they're going to go for food first, and then our transportation. They're already banning gas-powered cars, creating yeah. intentional car shortages. They are abolishing the middle class. They are treating us like the unwashed masses, and they are literally going to make it so that our vacations and seaside travel, seaside vacations are going to be a thing of only the wealthy. That's that's the goal of this. That's what they mean when they say, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy, you'll go nowhere. It's like the Hunger Games. Before I let you go, though, why do I mean... Every part of this climate agenda is somehow inconveniencing literally everybody on Earth. So why do people go along with it when none of their predictions have come true? What is it? This is almost like a religious fanaticism. It's, a, it's the idea of we have to do this. The United Nations cops. In fact, you can't even disagree with the UN. They did a partnership with Google. They own the science, according. So they're doing it in order to achieve this. Did you hear that? He said it's like a religious fanaticism. It's a, it's a philosophy, a wine that people are subscribing to. They're making this man and his technology, they're making it their God. Instead of the most high. All right. So that's why, you know, they're, they're, they're choosing their side. The line is being drawn in the sand. And most people are going to choose righteousness. They're going to choose the great value version of what the Lord already has in store for us for the nation of Israel I'm speaking of, okay? Because they don't have any vision. You know, like the scriptures say, where there's no vision, the people perish. So that's just a quick lesson I wanted to uh, do for you guys, Lord willing. Uh, it was edifying in some type of way for you. I want to give all praises once more to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Rekak, Wadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And I want to say Shalom to all the brothers and of course the few sisters who are pursuing this truth in sincerity. All right, may the blessing of election be upon your house. Shalom.